Jody Hancock and Tracy Dixon have been on a difficult journey, a search that seems never ending. Because the not knowing gnaws at you. They've been looking for their father, Danny Farrar, who hasn't been seen since 2014. It's, you just don't know. Like, what if this? What if that? Eight years ago, Danny left his assisted living facility in Westbrook with $20, telling staff he was going out for lunch. He never returned. Where could Danny have gone with just the clothes on his back and $20 in cash? Recently, Danny's case was featured on a popular true crime podcast called The Vanished. I'm Marissa, and from Wondery, this is episode 374 of The Vanished, Daniel Farrar's story. Jody and Tracy talking about their father and hope someone out there might know something. How does somebody just disappear? And somebody without the means to right. disappear. His daughters described Danny as a funny guy who was well known where he lived. You know, people would say hello to him, he'd walk away and he'd tell me their life story. <laughs> like he knew everything about he everybody. Did. I um, loved to read, that was like his number one thing. Um, you know, when I'd call him on the phone, one of the first questions is, what are you reading? But a stroke had left him disabled. His daughter saying he wasn't able to do a lot of the things he loved, like reading. You know, so it had a profound impact on his life. Even before the stroke, Danny hadn't had an easy life. He battled alcoholism. He was able to maintain sobriety for 28 years and was an active participant of Alcoholics Anonymous, sponsoring many, helping guide them through sobriety. But Danny had started drinking again in 2000. I mean, within a year, he lost his apartment, his business, everything. Danny ended up living on the New Haven Green, homeless. But he still maintained contact with his daughters, at points asking for money. Even though he hadn't been in contact with other people in his life, he was contacting us pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. So when he disappeared from his assisted living facility at the age of 63, some people believed he went back to the streets. His daughters immediately went to check their father's old stomping grounds, showing flyers to those living there, but to no avail. Jody and Tracy checked shelters, bus stations, train stations, area police departments. They posted flyers in Westbrook. They spent weekend after weekend walking through the woods. But about six weeks into the search, the sisters decided to stop. As I saw something I thought was a gray sweatshirt, which is what he was wearing at the time, and I got like, I don't know, I got like frozen for a minute. And that's when I, you know, we started talking about, do we really want to keep doing this? Because I don't want to find him now. I want him found, but I don't want to find him like that. State police also opened up an investigation and searched. But after days turned into months and months turned into years, these sisters have come to this conclusion. We would love to be hopeful that you know, but we're realistic. Like we do, I don't believe that my father is still alive, um, but it sure would be nice to know for sure. Tracy and Jody have donated their DNA and regularly search a national website called Name Us, which helps resolve missing persons and unidentified remains across the country. I drive through the town and think, oh, there's a body of water. I wonder if he's in there. Oh, there's a, a you know, a big old field. I wonder if he's in there somewhere. That's awful. It's awful. And it's never ending. Right. We're still looking. Right. Right. Yeah, we still care about this. Right. Jody and Tracy say since their father's story aired on the podcast, they haven't gotten any new information, but they are asking all of us if anyone knows anything or saw something that could be related to pass along the information. Now, we did reach out to state police who say in part, our major crimes detectives regularly review missing persons cases such as that of Daniel Farrar, who has been a missing person since 2014, to ensure that any any and all new leads are thoroughly investigated. If you know anything about Danny Farrar's case, contact Connecticut State Police. Jen Bernstein, Fox 61 News. Jen, thank you. Now, we did reach out to the state police, and they said in part, quote, our major crimes detectives regularly review missing persons cases, such as that of Daniel Farrar, who has been a missing person since 2014, to ensure that any and all new leads are thoroughly investigated.